Welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson, Psalms. This week we studied from lesson number 11, which has the title, Longing for God in Zion. And today is Final Thought Friday, where we come together, sum up the week's lesson, look at the main thoughts, and prepare for next week's lesson. Today's lesson opens with a beautiful statement that says this, The songs of Zion make an absolute commitment to staying mindful of Zion and the living hope in God's sovereign reign that it represents. While many blessings of God's sanctuary are experienced in this life, the hope in the fullness of life and joy in Zion is still in the future. Many of God's children long for the heavenly Zion with tears. To remember Zion implies not merely an occasional thought, but also a deliberate mindfulness and decision to live in accordance with that living memory. You know, sometimes I feel that we get so sidetracked and so invested in the everyday things that we do, in going here and there, and working, and relating with other people, and sometimes even in the good and appropriate aspects of life, you know, with church and with family and all these things, that we forget that the final goal to everything that we're doing is heaven. It's going back home to where we truly belong. I feel that we sometimes become so enraptured and so involved with the church of God that we forget about the God of the church. One thing that this lesson has truly pointed out is that the goal of life is Zion, the heavenly Zion, the home and the abode of God, and where our final destination is. Sometimes we forget that this is not our final home and that truly we belong somewhere else, that we are not of this world. We live here right now, but we are not of this place. Our final home is the New Jerusalem to where Jesus will take us at the end of all things. But truly, that will be the beginning of all things, all things made new. The lesson then quotes from the book, The Great Controversy from page 677, and it says, There, immortal minds will contemplate with never failing delight the wonders of creative power, the mysteries of redeeming love. There is no cruel, deceiving foe to tempt to forgetfulness of God. Every faculty will be developed, every capacity increased. The acquirement of knowledge will not weary the mind or exhaust the energies. There, the grandest enterprises may be carried forward, the loftiest aspirations reached, the highest ambitions realized, and still there will arise new heights to surmount, new wonders to admire, new truths to comprehend, fresh objects to call forth the powers of mind and soul and body. Friends, I so want to go there. I'm tired of what we have here, of the misery, the sadness, the depression, the angst, the anxiety, the worry, all of these things that make up human life here on planet Earth. I'm tired of that. Heaven promises to be the place of no more. No more anger, no more tiredness, no more impatience, no more temptation or sin, no more lostness or sorrow, no more depression, no more purposelessness. All of these things will have stayed in the past. There, where everything is made new, we as well will be made new. Our mind cannot even comprehend what is waiting for us there. That's where the book of Corinthians says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love him. And so the difficulty is in navigating between the not yet, but the already there. Because while we know that we're not there yet, Jesus has not come back yet, and we are still on this side of eternity, we know that we can live in the environment of heaven. Because the Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven is much more than just a geographical location. The kingdom of heaven is a relationship with the king of that place. And so while we're not there yet, we can already dwell in the heirs of the new kingdom as we relate to the king of that kingdom. Because ultimately, the kingdom of heaven is not primarily about the place itself, but a relationship with the king of that place. And that relationship can occur now, here, today on our side of this whole story. So may the Lord bless you as you continue to navigate life here on this planet, looking to Zion, marching to Zion. Our feet are still on the ground of this earth, but our eyes are already contemplating the new Jerusalem. May the Lord bless you, continue to walk with him, study your lesson, look up the Bible texts. These will inspire and educate you. Also, please remember to comment down below. I love hearing from you. And remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day, and I hope to see you in here tomorrow for another Sabbath School Daily.